So Rust 2018 came out last December, and at the time there was a lot of confusion about what Rust 2018 actually was. So what is Rust 2018? Well, one way of looking at it is that Rust 1.0 is Rust 2015, and Rust 2018 is everything that's changed between then and Rust 1.31. If the compiler you're using supports Rust 2018, it also supports a whole bunch of other features, like the question mark operator. And that's useful from a marketing perspective, but that's not what people were excited about. Another way of looking at it is that Rust 2018 is a chance to make some breaking changes in ways that would break stability guarantees otherwise. So, a little over 10 years ago now, Rust, Python 3 came out. And Python 2.7 hits end of life at the end of this year, and there's still a lot of places still using Python 2, or whatever, including my employer. I'm working on fixing that now. Uh, but part of the reason that people dragged their feet was that if you wanted to use Python 3 and your dependencies hadn't been updated to uh, be compatible with Python 3, you had to wait till they were updated. And those dependencies might have other dependencies that haven't updated. Or perhaps they had a C component that had to be rewritten, as I understand, rewritten from scratch. Or, eh, not many people are using Python 3 yet. I don't need to worry about it yet. So this all delayed adoption, and just people didn't. So there was a lot of concern with Rust 2018, with its backwards incompatible changes, that it might also split the ecosystem the way that Python did. Well, fortunately that's not the case, for starters. Both Rust 2015 and Rust 2018 shared the common standard library. So you don't have code that previously worked, you now have to use different import statements, or view statements. Um, what's more, Rust 2018 code can use Rust 2015 crates. Even better, Rust 2015 crates can use Rust 2018 crates. So it's force compatible too. Regular caveats apply. You have to have a sufficiently recent version of the compiler. But that applies like any new language feature. You, know, you want question mark operator? Well, you have to have the Rust C that supports it. This works because both editions uh, use the same compiler. There's just some flex in the compiler that's, oh, is the current crate Rust 2018? Okay, do this thing differently instead. But they both compile down to LVMIR, both can, all gets linked together. Uh, what's more, new features will get added to Rust 2015 as well, assuming they don't require changes that are Rust 2018 only. Uh, for instance, if you want const generics, great. As far as I know, they'll be coming to Rust 2015 whenever they come. If you want to sync await, eh, the keywords are only available in Rust 2018 because that would have been a breaking change. You can still use crates that use a sync and await. You just can't use them in your own code if you're running Rust 2015. So, what's new in Rust 2018? What does it bring to the table if the two of them are sufficiently compatible you can just easily link them together? Well, for starters, non-lexical lifetimes. Uh, I believe this will be backported eventually to Rust 2015, but for now it's just Rust 2018 only. So what are lexical lifetimes? Uh, here's a contrived example. So here we've just got a simple new type wrapper around back in two methods, first and push. Uh, in Rust 2018, we can create an instance, we can get the first element, print it out, sum one, and then we can push a new element to the list. Great! Rust 2015 doesn't like this because first is going to be around to the end of the scope, and that has an immutable borrow on VH. 
So when you try to get a mutable borrow, when we do the push, sorry, you can't have a mutable and a mutable borrow at the same time, so it fails. Uh, other times you might have seen this is if you ever tried to do something like this with a hash map, uh, try to get an element and modify and push it back in or something. And Rust 2018, this runs fine. Rust 2015 does not like it. So that makes a lot of codes nicer and simpler. In this case, I believe you'd be able to get by by assigning to a temporary variable, but uh, module system changes. So, one big thing, no more external crate. Uh, instead, you just have to add an entry to your cargo.toml and it'll automatically get uh, included. So that's great, you just have to use the crate wherever you want it. Uh, side effect for macros, because you no longer have an external crate to attach macro use to, that does mean you actually have to use the macro, which is a new thing that got added. Um, but that also means that you don't have every macro from every crate that you brought in all cluttering your namespace. You can just bring in whatever macro you need for that module. Use is mostly the same. So uh, before I get into this too, the, how 2018 works, I'll be explaining a bit how 2015 works. And this is where the module system kind of confuses people, because the way that it worked in 2015 is simple, consistent, and really easy to accidentally build a raw mental model about. So in Rust 2015, every time you say use whatever, it roots that path in the root module of your crate or program, rather than looking at things in the current module. Uh, when you do external crate, it just grasps the uh, namespace of that crate into whatever module you called external crate on. So if you have you know, sub-module and you call external crate there, everyone else will have to access that module through that, uh, that crate through the sub-module. Uh, this led to a lot of confusion because you know, the way you'd access reference the uh, item normally is different than how you'd reference it through use. In Rust 2018, it looks at what's in your current uh, uh, module, either things that you declared there or things that you uh, previously imported through use. Uh, if it doesn't find that, it'll check, is this the name of an external crate? Um, so where before, you, no, that was about the same, but it could just say use regex and it'll work. If you want to access something in your uh, crate or programs route, you just proceed with crate colon colon. If you need to disambiguate, you can preface it with self colon colon. If you want to see your parents' modules, super colon colon. Those two are the same. Crate is new though. External crate still works. You can still call external crate. You can still say macro use external crate. It'll still behave the same way it did. You just don't need to anymore. Um, for paths outside of use, they're pretty much the same. Uh, paths are all relative to the current module, except you can also now just directly reference external crates. So before, if you didn't want to use regex, but you wanted to access something from it, you had to say colon colon regex, colon colon, whatever you wanted inside of it. You don't need that using colon colon anymore. So that's that's actually really nice. So this is just an illustration of you know, before you do this, now you do that. Um, we have question mark and macro rules, which this actually came out uh, the release after Rust 2018, but it's Rust 2018 only. Um, 
If you're familiar with how the question mark operator works in regular expressions, this is basically the same. So here's a motivating example. So we've just got a simple macro here, takes its arguments, prints them out one per line. Uh, and say we want trailing comma, because trailing commas are really handy. Um, unfortunately, our grammar there doesn't match the trailing comma, so it won't let us use it. There's a couple ways to deal with that. You could have a separate match rule that handles the extra trailing comma. That's ugly. You could use a star at the end, so you can have zero or more trailing commas. But then people can put in an absurd number of trailing commas. So that's ugly. Um, finally, if you use the question mark operator, it just zero or one. Of course, you know, this works for more than just commas. You can use it in any type of situation where you just use a star or a plus before in your patterns. Uh, Rust 2018 adds three new keywords. Um, nothing stable is using them yet. Uh, async and await make it easier to write asynchronous code. Uh, Right now, there is a lot of debate about how a weight should be used, if it should be used at all. Maybe it should be a macro. Do we want something in prefix or suffix position? There's a lot of opinions. Uh, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, if you want to find more, uh, more, there's the RFC there. There's also the website areweasyncyet.com, I believe. Uh, so that's a good place for keeping on top of, okay, what's the current state of async and await in Rust. The other new keyword is try. Um, what try does is changes the behavior of the question mark operator so that instead of returning from the function, it just returns early values, values early from a block. So in this case, if, um, Foo and bar are you know, option in 32s, this will, or no, I guess, result i32 something else. Um, if either of them are an error, it will return that error to answer, otherwise, it will return the sum. And I believe the RFC specifies or suggests that you don't actually have to wrap the result in OK. But so that's kind of it. That's Rust twenty. That's Rust twenty eighteen. Uh, there's a couple other things that I haven't mentioned because they're kind of technical. I think there's stuff to do with uh, implicit lifetimes and nicer handling of generics. But this is the stuff most people are excited about. This is the stuff that will most likely affect you. Uh, I have a lot of time, so I really should have talked about how to upgrade your thing to Rust 2018. Uh, but if you look at the last link here, and I'll be posting the slides to the meetup group, you can see instructions on how to upgrade. Um, I've upgraded a couple things, mostly it went painlessly except for realizing that, oh, hey, I let some tests run, and now it didn't work, but that's not Rust 2018's fault. 